we are working on that and i'm sure the next account will give you a better reflection of how that has been treated so as at that time that was what happened thank you mr chair the taxation you pay in 2019 3.02 million was it tax from coming from the uh, subsidiary the UGL? no mr chair those were paying withholding tax on behalf of supplies and other withholding taxes so that was what we paid and not for UGL per se by UGL as a subsidiary we pay its taxes by then I think it wasn't even making any profits at that time so those are the reasons thank you mr. chair another issue in the financial statement the balance sheet is that under current liabilities you have a figure of 961.31 million Ghana cities as provisions. Provision for what? Mr. Chair, you did mention earlier about the um, legal costs, and that is provision for legal costs, mainly driven by that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The provision for legal costs in the account itself was 690 million but this provision is 961 million there's a difference of about 300 million the 690 was the additional provision for that year the previous year we had made some provision so the 690 was additional because the okay i've seen it now okay. previous year you have 264 thank you mr chair so if you add 690 to 264 you'll be arriving at um, Close to the nicest one. That's okay. Thank you. Mr. All right. But your liquidity ratio is alarming. Very, very, very alarming. Yes, Mr. Chair, we are working on that and wow. gradually we should improve. If you look at the 2021, we have actually improved a bit. So okay. we, we're working on it. We'll get there. Okay. Thank you. All right, let's move on to the next paragraph 12-11 ranking. Thank you, Chairman. The issue is no remittance of funds to the University of Ghana Research Endowment Fund. And the amount calculated is 2,197,000. Um, policy number 5.8 of University of Ghana Research Policy requires that universities shall promote effective resources mobilization to support its research. In this regard, senior management approved a 60% and 40% ratio of all projects overhead income in respect of the university and other beneficiaries respectively. 15% out of the total earnings of 100% was earmarked to be fund, to be a fund of the University of Ghana Research and Development Fund. And under the management of the Office of the Research Innovation and Development Officer. Our review of 122 out of 185 sample projects of the university showed that total amount of 14.6 million was recognized as project overhead income as of 31st December 2019. However, an amount of 2,197,041 CDs, 29 pesos, representing 15% was not remitted to the research fund as stipulated in the, the shared ratio. And the auditors are saying that the continuous refusal of remitting the required funds to the research fund could deny the university from supporting its own research at initiatives, providing future support for grant writing to secure external funding. Uh, how do you respond to this charge? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, in 2017-2018, the university uh, recognized the need for harnessing uh, overheads to generate IGF. So we came out with a policy. 
that policy was rolled out in 2019. So 2019 was the first year that we rolled that out. Yes, I appreciate, we appreciate as management that uh, we're not able to pull all the overheads from the various units. Um, since then, uh, we've submitted um, a write-up to University Council that has been approved and currently we are rolling out a decentralized grant management system where we expect that every unit, we have an officer in every unit and they will pool their resources. So we are improving upon the gap that we identified in rolling out the 2017-2018 policy. But Mr. Chair, I must also add that we've made effort in retrieving as much of the resources. There are some few discrepancies that um, we couldn't notify the auditors within the 30 days. As a university, projects that come in the form of capacity building doesn't attract overheads because they support PhD and researchers. In the list, the 122 list, we also see some of those projects in there. So we need to do a little cleaning. We couldn't do that before the 30 days, and that is why we are here. But Mr. Chair, I can assure you that we've taken a lot of efforts to make sure that this is corrected, because this is a major income generating uh, um, source for the university. Thank you. Oh, you, you, you essentially agree with the auditors then in what they are recommending? Yes, and because of that, we've come out uh, uh, with approval from the University of Ghana Council to roll out a decentralized grants management system to improve upon the collection of the overhead. What do you mean by the decentralized grants management system? What, do, yeah. what does that lead that? Okay, mean? so currently, my office is responsible for grant management in the office and we operate at a central level so currently what we are doing is all the colleges are going to have offices so my office is going to delegate responsibilities to all the colleges and through that we hope to improve upon uh, uh, the identification of the overheads and the collection through the uh, finance directorate that is what we meant by the decentralized grant management system Okay, that one and I'm okay if they are doing what they are saying. Yeah, but the recommendation is that the vice chancellor, the pro vice chancellor, together with the director of financial, ensure that the amount due the research endowment fund yes. is transferred. Yes. Have you done that? Yes. So um, after this, we've done a lot of uh, checking the projects and we've corrected a lot of them, apart from one or two minor errors. Yes. Auditors, have they transferred the money to the fund? On our chair, we don't have that information. Thank you. So, Provost Chancellor, they don't have that information. You haven't provided it to them. Yes, Mr. Chair. You must show evidence that the money was transferred to the fund. Yes, so um, as I indicated earlier, there were some discrepancies in the 122. So for okay. instance, item 122, which is uh, support from Talo Fund, is purely capacity building. And it doesn't attract overheads. Okay. We so those that need to be transferred, can we inform the auditors about that you have done that? Yes. Um, there's been some transfers made and director for finance in 2019 mm. and 2020, but not to the amount indicated here because okay. of the discrepancies. Yeah, because there is need for reconciliation. Yes. So if the reconciliation is done and what needs to be transferred has been transferred, then we don't have any issue. Okay. So the auditors will have to do that. Yes, Mr. Chair. Audit service, you have to ask uh, the, the officers who did the audit to go and do the reconciliation and ensure that the amount due is actually transferred. Let's go to the next one, paragraph 1218, Vice Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we are talking about overdue rental receivables uh, to the tune of 1.1 million Ghana cities. And uh, the recommendation was for the Director of Finance should recover all our standing rental receivables 
and initiate appropriate steps to charge interest on all outstanding indebtedness at the prevailing Bank of Ghana 91-day Treasury bill rate. Director of Finance, have you recovered all these amounts? Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have not recovered all, but we have recovered a substantial amount. And some of them, we have attached a copy, details of the recovery and what has gone through. Especially three of them, they were actually errors on our part in terms of billing customers we shouldn't have built and there are transactions that have been reversed. So we have worked on that. We will provide the details to the auditors to validate and confirm. Madam, yes. this was a 2021 audit. We are in 2023. You only have 30 days for you to respond. So 2023 is sitting in front of Public Accounts Committee to tell us that we would provide the evidence to um, the auditors. That is a huge Madam, that's not right. Mr. Chair, the evidence has been provided. They are yet to validate and confirm. That is what it is. It isn't that we haven't sent anything, but they will speak to it. So I cannot say it's been closed. That is what I'm trying to put. Out in. of the 1.1 million Ghana cities, yep. how much of it have you recovered? 941,439.24. Auditors, could you confirm what she's saying? Honorable Chair, uh, an amount of 941,390.2, uh, the minute we are aware that they've recovered, but we don't have any evidence to that effect. That is our position now. Madam, yeah. they don't have any evidence. The evidence is in our financial system. Why don't you give it to them? We have provided the hard copies. They will need to validate it. Especially, for example, the receipts. We key in the receipts in the system. They, we can give them the hard copies, but they will have to validate whether we have actually booked it. So with the information, do they are ready to provide them, and then they can validate any time, any day. It's in the financial system. Madam, next time you are not going to have that luxury. You refund it, and then later you can take your good old time to give them the, paper, uh, the paperwork. You are supposed to do this within 30 days. You have told them, but you don't have the hard copy evidence for them. This delay will cost you a lot of uh, rental uh, income because some of the, uh, the people who owe you the debtors may go off. Director of Finance, any time you are cited by the auditors, when you comply with their recommendation, kindly invite them to come back, to come and have a look at it. It looks like that relationship, you don't have it with the auditors. Mr. Chair, we'll improve on that. Thank you for your feedback. Yes. Chairman, just for the sake of clarification, the Director of Finance indicated that some of their clients were wrongly billed and that there has been a reversal, which would then mean that the total amount that has been reported would, would change. She has also indicated that some amount in excess of 900000 has been collected. So what amount has been reversed with regards to the corrections that you made pertaining to the clients that you wrongly built? Mr. Chair, 92,294.78 was reversed. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Your next infraction is paragraph 1223, failure to recover outstanding impress. So the auditor noted that out of a total of 9.5 million declared as staff loans and advances in 2019, 
in the financial statement. An amount of 3.5 was identified as outstanding impress. However, there was no evidence that the outstanding impress was recovered from the salaries of the affected staff in the 2019 financial year. They have provided details of that with the names of the people who are involved. And it's up to 304. Now, the recommendation of the auditors is that the Director of Finance should ensure that all outstanding impress are validated by the internal audit directorates and recovered from the salaries of the affected persons. Again, any staff who fails to retire outstanding impress after the reasonable 10 days should not be granted subsequent impress. Can we tell the committee which action you've taken on this recommendation? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I must admit, in 2019-2020, we had a lot of challenges with accountable impress. Since then, we have put in a lot of measures to improve the process. And as you know, it takes a while for things to normalize, but we have made significant progress. And most of these amounts have been retired as we sit. What is outstanding is a 308,257.32 to be retired. Um, as you may be aware, operationally, some of these things have their own challenges. People say I have retired, others say I can't find a document. But we have put in a lot of measures now to avoid this. So that is where we are. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So recoveries were not made from the salaries of these affected staff, but rather they retired the impress. I recall a few were deducted. Mm. I think even in the audit committee, I can't say specifically, but I, I recall a few, but not most of them, but some of them have all been retired. What is happening is the documents, as Provisi indicated, we have different colleges and different points where we disperse this mm. amount. So what happens is everybody will retire at what, where they have to. Some end up sending it maybe to central administration, whereas they should have sent it to maybe College of Health Sciences. So we're trying to get this thing sorted out. And that is how far we have come with the retirement. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Auditor, do you have any evidence to the effect that uh, this amount were retired leaving 300,000 plus? Honorable Chair, Evidence of recovery of an amount of three thousand not three million two hundred fifty-four thousand nine hundred and ten point four six was brought to us yesterday. So we were not able to verify. Maybe we may do so after a year. All right. So that's a huge work to do. Um, you need to retire it and uh, verify it and then confirm if they are document that you accept and give us your findings. Let's move to the next one. Paragraph 1228, Honorable Roxon. Mm, thank you. The case of the auditors is in respect of no remittance of um, some income taxes that you withheld. Observation 2021, July 2023. What's the status? Mr. Chair, in, with respect to income tax, yes, we had challenges, but we have redeemed ourselves and we took advantage of the government policy waiver of interest and penalty. We actually saved about 10 million in that, but we have settled all our tax obligations as we sit and we are on uh, course to make sure on a monthly basis all those are remitted. Thank you, Mr. Uh, so the 3.4 has been remitted? It has been remitted. Have you brought this to the attention of the auditors? Yes, Mr. Chair, I think they can speak to that. Thank you. Uh, auditors, can you verify and confirm this matter? Honorable Chair, the total task has been remitted. We have verified them and we can confirm. Thank you. Chairman, thank you all. Let's move to the next one. 
paragraph 1233, Honorable Isaac Kupoku. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, 1233 is about need to improve students' receivables uh, management. Chairman, the auditors uh, reported some uh, weaknesses in the way the students' accounts uh, is managed. And uh, an example is that an amount of 25 million 843,000 reported in the financial statement of students' fees receivable, uh, 2.5 million is owned by 700 students who were not in the active students list for the 2018-2019 and 2019-2020 academic uh, years. Again, uh, if you have a copy of the report before you, uh, page 261, a number of other weaknesses uh, have been cited. Likely students who have stopped the course, double billing of students, students with uh, affiliate institutions, unknown students identification numbers, students with credit balance above uh, 1,000 cities. Uh, I want to know uh, whether you've taken the necessary steps to address the weaknesses. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, we've taken the necessary steps and we have actually been investigating and making sure the transactions in the financial system have integrity. And I'm happy to say that a lot of the processes have been improved. Personnel have been trained and we have investigated and reduced most of the transactions. It is just left with one outstanding, which is about 3.4 million. That is actually supposed to be revenue to the university. We have investigated and we want to be very sure before we write it into other income. The reason why that amount seems to be still outstanding is the fact that it is dollar denominated. It was received from international students, which as is, is stated in the system, we need to identify. But the dollar value as at that time was about 1.1. Currently, it's just about 350,000. But because of the CD valuation, you see it as the same amount. But that is the main reason. That will be income. And we need to be very sure before we book it to other income. We are almost close to concluding that investigation. And we will treat it as appropriate and get the auditors buy in on that before we move it in. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, maybe before I go to the auditors, uh, um, the auditors have indicated that these anomalies were as a result of a number of factors. I'm only interested in the first one. I just want, you know, some explanation. Granting permission to staff to do back office registration. Uh, can you educate us on what the back office registration Entails. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The back office registration is normally allowed for maybe we have students on scholarship, let's say from GTEC. And we, in our system, you need to register before you can do anything in the system. And you need to pay, have credit on your account. Now, students funded by GetFund, for example, their check is not ready. And we know GetFund will buy all these payers. So they write to us formally to allow them to register whilst they process the payment. So in that case, you need special permission to be able to get the student to register. That is what is entailed in the back office registration. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Auditors, do you have any evidence as to the steps taken by the university so far to address the weaknesses? When I would chair, the university has taken a number of steps to resolve the issues. The only outstanding issue is the amount that was stated by the director of finance, which they are still investigating, which is about three million. So the issue is not resolved. Can you give us some timelines as to how the outstanding amount is going to be 
the issues surrounding them are going to be addressed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We are hoping to conclude that within this year. Thank you. Chairman, that's where we are. Thank, thank you very much, Honorable Member. Now, <clears throat> let's have the next one, paragraph 1242. It's about failure to update signatories of bank accounts. About 19 accounts of the investee, some signatories have been separated from the investee. And um, you have not updated the accounts, the, the signatories. So the auditors are asking that you should do that. Have you been able to do that? Yes, Mr. Chair, we have done that. Thank you. Auditors, can you confirm? Honorable Chair, all the signatories have been changed down. Thank you. So how many accounts do you have at the investing? <laughs> we have accounts with a lot of banks. We have both operational and... I mean, you put all of them together. Just mention one figure for me. <laughs> we, are, we have about 14. Yeah. But with one bank, for example, we could have three accounts. We have about 14 bankers. With one bank, we could have about But three I, I have counted about 19 accounts here. Yes. But you said 14. Sorry, it's 19. With one bank, we can have more than yes. one account. With, with GCB, you have an account with 1, 2, 3, yeah. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, yeah. 13, 14. Yeah. 14 with GCB. Yes. Mm. And some of this, actually, some of these bank accounts are all not at the center. We have colleges. Yeah. So those are some of the reasons. So as a director of finance, are you signatory to all of them? Not all. Not For example, all. with the college accounts, the college finance officers and the provost are signatories. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Let's move on to the next one, which is paragraph 1248. Absence of ownership title to investor of Ghana lands. Hey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um. Well, you don't have title to the land. <coughs> the investment land, you don't have title to it. Mr. Chair, please, we do. So which land is this in question? Is that, okay, maybe it's not investing land. But they say on title on investment of Ghana lands. Investment of Ghana lands, okay. So you have the Southwest Legon Kisseman. Um, approximately about 17.69 uh, acres. Then SCD Center, Tema about 0 0.66 acre. Danfa Community Clinic, approximately six acres. Number seven, Sakumona Link, at Abiyo Kwashi, 0 0.26 acre. Number one, Safe Sakumona Link, at Abiyo Kwashi, 0 0.16. And it continue. Some in Kumasi, Chito Vota Region, Chawemu, Begome, Cape Coast, Takwadi, all over Ghana. Do you have title to all these lands now? Mr. Chairman, since the audit was conducted, we've put in place a number of measures towards obtaining titles for all of the university's lands. Um, it's an ongoing process. Um, in the appendix, which is um, listed, Appendix 6, which is a response to the audit query, we have listed um, where we are on uh, the various processes. We have been able to complete some. There's still quite a bit of work to do, and Mr. Chairman, we are progressing on that. And um, I must say that in addition to our physical development and municipal services directorate, a special coordinator has been appointed to assist with these processes, and we are seeing some results now. And um, yes, so we have completed the process for some, but for others it is still ongoing, and we'll continue to work on this. Mr. So Chairman. can you give us in summary form how many you have completed the process 
and how many are still ongoing? Um, yes, because the Chairman. total number 27 parcels of land. Um, Mr. Chairman, we have completed six completely now, and we are still working on. So, the 21 are still. Yes, please, Mr. Ongoing. Chairman. Auditors, can you confirm the six they have completed? And that evidence shows that they are in the process of completing the rest 21. Honorable Chair, for the six completed ones, uh, we can't confirm. All that we know is that the 27 is at the various stages of completion. But we can't confirm the one completed. Thank you. I think that my earlier observation is right that you don't have coordination with the auditors. Is it because you are an institution on your own, so you don't want to let other people to come to you? Um, Vice Chancellor. No, 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 Honorable Chair, that's not the situation. I mean, we've, we've had um, some changes at our internal audit directorate. Indeed, currently there's an acting auditor uh, who you can see is not here today because of certain emergencies and we are going to have a new auditor come in uh, come 1st August. Mm. So there's been some uh, uh, changes of staff and sometimes the coordination hasn't been as it should be. But we are hoping that especially from uh, 1st August things are going to be uh, smoother. Even when we leave here, there were a number of things we submitted yesterday. They couldn't obviously uh, verify some. They have to come to the field to actually verify. So, yeah. Honorable Chair, we will improve. Okay. The university is a big community. Yes. And uh, that of one as, as one person in charge of all this, uh, do you sometimes delegate some of the functions out, or you want to do everything alone? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I do delegate, and I have four college finance officers in charge of all the colleges. So there's delegation of authority. Thank Dele you, Mr. Chair. Okay. So, and so Honorable so Chair, I would like to add that in the past three weeks or so, uh, I've, with the advice of the audit committee, I've appointed one of her deputies as our external audit liaison so that he will be coordinating all of these things. So we hope to have better coordination in the weeks and months to come. Thank you. Good. Let's move to the next one, paragraph 1253, Honorable Kofi Adams. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. From absence of ownership title to your lands, to absence of comprehensive policy on rental facilities. The Director of Finance and the Registrar, the recommendation was for you to develop a comprehensive framework or policy on the hiring and use of the university facilities for consideration of the council. Because by your own strategic plan that you have in place for 2014 to 2024, you were to promote competitive use or generation of IGF using your internal facilities. But the absence of this has impaired this strategy. Have you done so? Yes, Mr. Chairman, this has been done and uh, the policy is in place. In addition, I'd like to add that um, an automated system to keep track of these systems has been uh, developed and uh, is being piloted at the moment so that would have better control over um, what is going on as regards rental facilities. Auditors, can you confirm the development of this policy and even the further additions of the automation she is referring to, if you have checked recently. Honorable Chair, to start with the automation, we have not checked. And for the policy, a draft has been developed. We have a copy. But I'm still going through some 
uh, reviews by management, but it's not that approved of it. But we have the draft. Register, you said it's available and it's in use, but they are saying it's just a draft policy. Have you submitted what you have to cancel and has cancel approved it or? Uh, Mr. Chairman, this has been approved by senior management for consideration by the University Council. Well, then you should hurry and take it through Council because the recommendation is for the Council's ap approval. Yes, es Mr. Especially Chairman. when the strategy was to travel from 2014 to 2024 then you 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 needed it at least before the period ends chairman that should be all for them on this issue next one paragraph 1258 deputy ranking thank you very much chairman this has to do with um, the absence of a business continuity and disaster recovery planning um the last time the auditors visited you they recommended that your chief information technology officer should develop a business continuity and disaster recovery plan and um, this is to ensure critical information systems can be recovered within a required time frame and it is so because um, your, your institution do not have a baseline continuity and, and a business and a disaster recovery plan and uh, this includes uh, specific college procedures financial and academic management information systems and other staffs. Uh, have you been able to put in place um, these recovery plans? The last time you suggested that there's Sorry. a draft policy. Sorry. Have you been able to get the policy implemented as we speak? Um, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, as regards IT, this has been done and developed and being used to a certain extent. Um, other areas of the um, business continuity and disaster recovery planning as regards um, academic affairs, our physical development office and so on are being worked on uh, towards approval of an entire policy. But then the IT uh, part of it has been completed and is, uh, is working. Well. I mean, since uh, 2020, your response has been that you are working on a draft policy, and this morning you still make claims that you are working on a draft policy. How long would this take? Mr. Chairman, we hope to be able to finish this, the parts that are not yet completed, by early next year. Early next year, January, February, March, April, May. This is a house of records. So we'll by, the, by the end of the first quarter, Mr. Chairman. By the end of the first quarter next year. Yes, please. All right. Auditors, are you able to confirm if indeed they have put in place um, uh, an information uh, systems recovery plan? Honorable Chair, we can confirm that a business continuity and disaster recovery plan is in the draft stage. We are still working on it. Okay. All right, thank you. But it, she, she makes claims to the fact that for the information technology bit, they have a system that is functioning now somewhat. You are not aware of that, Auditor? That one is done. Okay, all right. Thank you very much, Chairman. We, we hope that when we meet on the 2022 report, this plan will still not be in the draft stage. It will move from that stage to maybe the next stage. Yes, Mr. Chairman. We'll make sure that that happens. Thank you. You want to? You say you complete it by March. Oh. Uh, is it April? Is it March? April? Quarter. By the quarter. end of the first quarter, Mr. That's Chairman. March. By the end of March. That we will work quarter. on it and make sure that it is completed, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Paragraph 1263, Honorable Apak. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, the issue in question has to do with the absence of fee paying regime on laboratory services to do with the Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research. According to the auditors, uh, they became aware during their audit that there was no standard operating procedure 
uh, management uh, responded and indicated that they were in the process of developing the SOP. Do you now have the standard operating procedure with regards to the laboratory services at Noguchi? Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Yes, the draft SOP is currently under review by management, and hopefully once that is done, it will be approved by the Finance and General Purposes Committee of Council. Uh, Chairman, as you know, it's my alma mater. Not long ago, I was uh, a lecturer, but I must say I am pained. Uh, this tendency of is in the process, is in the process, and is becoming one too many. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it reflects well on us at all, okay. quite honestly. Yes. So please, uh, let's make sure that we get the job done. Yes, we Mr. cannot Chair. continue the processes in perpetuity. Yes, Mr. Chair. Very well, Chairman. Paragraph 1269, Honorable Yusuf. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, the infraction has to do with encroachment of University of Ghana landed properties. And here, reference is made to your regional learning centers in the Volta region, Western region, and also in the Eastern region. In addition to that, some accommodations are not also maintained. What is the state of these uh, issues and if you want we can we can start them one after the other because for instance in volta region the landed property measuring 7.2 acres was allocated to you and there's a private person building on it what is the state of it now have you been able to resolve it has he moved out of the place um thank you mr chairman um, to a certain extent, uh, this question can be answered by the previous one that I gave as regards the um, ownership of uh, various lands. Uh, so this has also been added to the portfolio of the special coordinator who has been assigned to work on um, the investees' um, properties. I must um, add that... Um, we are working on securing the properties. We have put in uh, funding to, um, to erect fences around uh, many Madam, of let's, them. Let's take this one after the other. I've asked you a specific question. This relates to Volta region, okay? The 7.2 acres of land are located to you. There's a private person encroaching on that land. What is the state of it? When was the coordinator appointed? This is a 2020 report, and we are in 2023. Like Honorable Apak said, we are in the process, we are in the process, it's becoming too much. Um, Mr. Chairman, one minute. I'm trying to find um, this one and what the situation is, this particular one. If I can have a minute, please. Um, Mr. Chairman, I would, I'm sorry, I have, it seems I've mixed up my papers, but I have um, the current status of the various lands. I would get back to you in a minute on that. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've been able to locate it now. So the situation as regards that one is that the parcel has freehold title with duly executed conveyance and LI-144 <coughs> compliance site plan has been procured for registration purpose. 
So this property has been fenced off to prevent further encroachment on it. So what it means that that private person is no longer on that building, I mean that land. Is that the case? Yes, that is the case, okay, Mr. That's Chairman. What I want to hear. So we'll move to the next one. Volta region. This one, individual farmers have encroached your demonstration farm. What is the state of it? Have you been able to take them off there? Yes, Mr. Uh, Chairman. It is the same as the one that I um, cited earlier. We have been able to fence this land to stop further encroachment on it. And in Eastern Region, what is the state of it? Um, in Kufridia, um Mr. Chairman, that uh, property is currently under contention as to the um, rightful owner of that property. So we are in court on that matter at the moment. Is the land, the property registered in your name? Um, no. The reg it is registered in the name of a private, uh, another person, another person, and we are contesting that at okay, the moment. Since you are in court, court I think we'll, we'll leave that. But uh, the auditors made some recommendations that you should establish an infrastructure fund to ensure that you have some cash flows to be able to uh, maintain your facilities. Have you done that? Yes, Mr. Chairman, an infrastructure fund, because most of these properties fall under the university's College of Education. So the College of Education has established an infrastructure fund to set aside funds for this. And in addition, in um, approving the university's annual budget um, on a yearly basis, funds are allocated for this purpose, Mr. Chairman. And then you were also supposed to provide funding for the director of PDMSD. Have you done that to undertake the exercise of ensuring that your lands are well uh, documented? Have you been able to do yes, that? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Funds are um, allocated on a yearly basis, and part of that funding is also uh, goes into the appointment of this special coordinator to work with our estate management division on these matters, Mr. Chairman. Auditors, can you confirm all what she has told me with regards to the trade facilities, the land, and those uh, buildings? One of which, uh, as I indicated earlier on, yesterday some documents was furnished to us because it was given to us late. We were not able to go through. So we don't know whether what he's saying is also part of it. We have to maybe do that after here. Thank you. Man, can you put it off? This is University of Ghana, a university that we are all proud of. I'm a, a, a student of, a past student of University of Ghana. If I were to as, as submit my assignment and I submit it late, I'll be queried. This is a 2020 audit report, 2021 audit report, and you've been taken through all the processes for you to give answers and provide documentation. And it's only yesterday that you're giving out these documents to the auditors. I mean, this list, list I'm missing. And if, now that you even have, no, you even get B minus because you won't be able to submit because the, the portal would have been closed if you were to submit your assignment. Portal will close. So uh, I think that we should improve upon the way we do things. And next time, uh, document that you're supposed to submit should be submitted. I thought that at the end of this session, I would have congratulated you and, and be proud, but I, I don't think I can do it. I'm a little bit disappointed, I might say. Thank you. Chama. Uh, thank you. Hon Honorable Chair, uh, we acknowledge those gaps, and as I mentioned, we have taking steps, especially in appointing uh, one of her deputies to coordinate information between the university and the external uh, auditors. And so we will do better next time so that we are able to submit before the portal closes. Thank you.
Well, let's move on to the next one. Paragraph 1275, Deputy Ranking. Thank you very much. At this point, I want to open the portal so that we could uh, resubmit some questions. And it has to do with um, inadequate teaching and learning facilities. The auditors noted that your Cape Coast Learning Center do not have internet access and allowable facility to aid studies and research. Then again, uh, virtually most of your regional learning centers uh, lacks adequate learning facilities and this has affected student enrollment. You indicated to the auditors that there are renovation works being undertaken at the Cape Coast Learning Center. Has it completed and what is the status if not? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, the renovation works at the Cape Coast Learning Center have been completed. And um, I would like to add that as part of the um, classroom, or should I say um, the efforts by the university to improve upon teaching and learning facilities, we have undertaken extensive uh, refurbishment and um, provision of equipment in all of our learning centers since uh, this audit was conducted. So um, if you were to visit today, you'd see a very much, a much better uh, situation in all of our learning centers. We've added on facilities, we've uh, added on equipment to make uh, learning more interactive and so on. So there's been marked improvement in this area in all of our learning centers. So are you confirming to me this morning that the Cape Coast Center has internet access? Yes, Mr. Chairman, it does. It does. How about the Bogatanga Learning Center? Bogatanga Learning Completed Center. Completed innovation. All of, all of the learning um, centers. You indicated to the auditors that the, your WAL Learning Center um, facility is slated for innovation and will be part of future refurbishments. Has, uh, have you been able to work on that as well? Mr. Chairman, that one is ongoing as we, as we speak. The contract has been awarded, work has started on that. So, it, so the case is that it is not all that is completed? It is not all that is completed. It is all an right. ongoing process and will continue into the future. Okay, so at this point, um, auditors, are you able to confirm if indeed um, all the learning centers but for the war Yes. Well, I, I'm, I'm being told to ask the, the University of Ghana, uh, the WA Center, what, what stage are we at now? I mean, give me, in terms of percentage, the completion rate, the percentage. Is it so it is, um, is it 40 percent complete? Is it 60 percent complete? And if so, when should we expect um, the 100% the, the completion? Mr. Chairman, I would say that it is about 50% complete, 50 complete. And we are continuing to work on it. All right, okay. That, that is a... And I'd also like to add that um, we are also still working on the Bogatanga Learning Center. A contract has been awarded for that as well and we are working on it. Auditors, please confirm or otherwise for me. One of which, um, as I indicated earlier on, once again, uh, we may not be able to, we are not able to confirm based on the fact that some document was made available uh, yesterday and we are, we are not sure whether the assertion made is also part of it. So th that is what we can see now. Well, wasn't auditors expected to go to the site well, so at this point, um, as the saying goes, uh, according to the auditors, you and I were not there, so they cannot confirm. They cannot confirm what you are saying, but we we expect that they they, they do that after you have submitted these documents to them. So at this point, Chairman, I want to close the sub the portal for <laughs> late submission. Um, Honorable Baba, paragraph 1280. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Paragraph 1280 deals with um, um, research activities not being integrated. And uh, the status of uh, the university 
provides that the Office of the Research and Innovation and Development shall have the responsibility for the promotion, facilitation, and coordination of research activities in the university. And uh, however, uh, per the author's observation, since 2014 to 2020, a total reported project overheads of 12,687,919.44 and the period on the, uh, on the review only 4,604 was reported by the Office of um, the Research, Innovation and Development, ORID, with the remaining 8 million reported from self-administered research uh, contracts by schools, institutes, and centers within the university. Uh, this resulted in the denial of the 60% of the university share of 4,850,182.41 due from projects administered outside the ORID. So, and also the re re research endowment fund was also underfunded by 1,212,545.60, being 50 percentage share due from projects administered outside ORID. So the recommendation was that the university should um, use the university status, all research activities should be coordinated by ORID to increase the pools of funds available for academic research. How far have you gone with this uh, recommendation of the Water General? Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, effective first September, um, we are going to run a decentralized grant management system. We had a collegiate uh, review report that also recommended that council has given us the green light and currently we are training um, research support staff to manage the various uh, grant management offices in the college. So effective first September, we'll have um, grant offices in the colleges. Thank you. This audit was in 2020. Yes. Um, yes, and uh, you are yet to implement this. You are, you are, you are thinking of 20, 2021. And we are thinking of uh, September this year. 2023, yes. Yes. to implement the recommendation of the auditors. Yes, Mr. Chair, this involved uh, changes in administrative structure, and we needed council approval. So council in October 2022 gave us the approval to change the organogram. But clearly, you can see that you are losing monies yes. that are supposed to come to you for research. Yes. Because of uh, uh, the non-compliance of your own statutes. Yes. So... You, you, you have to. Yeah, so effective first September, we'll have the structure in place, and we hope that um, at the college level, reporting on overheads will be made easier. Thank you. Auditors, how do you, what do you have to say about this? Honorable Chair, as indicated by the Pro Vice Chancellor, uh, we are made to understand that uh, management has taken a decision to de decentralize the management of the projects by 1st September. So that is what we can see. The Chairman, I defer to you. Let's move to the next one, paragraph 1286. Funds lock up in investment, 1.2 million. So the investee, um, that is the Office of Research, Innovation and Development. You invested in NDK financial services. Even though the Vice Chancellor has issued a circular that all units of the university will not be required to invest with only commercial banks that have met the minimum capital requirements of the Bank of Ghana. Yet you invested with NDK financial services. And only 100,000 was redeemed, leaving a balance of 1,000,000 
234,767.59 Ghana cities. Have you been able to recover the, this balance from the NDK Financial Services? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as a university, we have learned from our previous acts. We have Will you answer my question first? We haven't recovered the amount, but it's okay. going through the process. Currently, it's with the legal counsel to follow up through the due process. We currently have an investment policy which confirms what we are saying, and we are adhering to that. So that is where we are. Why is NDK, NDK Financial Services not able to refund the money or pay you the money? Is there any reason? Um, they had liquidity challenges, and what they told us when we sent it to them was they promised actually pay, but we never got the money. So we have followed our internal processes and handed it over to our legal counsel. Are they still our... in operation? Um, yes, to some extent. <laughs> to, to some extent means what? Um, I can't confirm their status as of now. Then, then your answer, yes, should not be the case. Okay. I, I ask, that. are they still operating? You say yes. I withdraw that. I okay. withdraw that. The legal counsel will follow up with due process and inform It means that the legal counsel never follow up on all these issues. Now you are saying that they will follow up. They I haven't followed up. It's a continuous process. They sent a letter and they keep following up. But as are they, the 100,000 was retrieved through correspondence as well. They have sent reminders. And I think we have attached a copy of the letter. It's a process which is ongoing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So the question was, the, you are the director of finance, right? Yes, Mr. Chair. And the vice chancellor has issued a circular. And you, the director of finance, probably who advised the vice chancellor to issue that circular, went against the decision of the Vice Chancellor to invest in a different bank. Mr. Chair, these are things we inherited and we are trying to resolve it. So, <laughs> so we, we would work on it. We inherited it, but we've taken ownership and we are working towards retrieving the amount. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You inherited it from whom? <laughs> as part of my portfolio as Director of Finance. When did you take over as the Director of Finance? January 2021. And this investment was made in when? 2019, 2020. Oh. I hear 2017 thereabouts. Pro Vice Chancellor, that's your unit. Uh, Mr. Chair. So you, you did the investment? No. You inherited it. I also. I, yes, I, I took over in 2020. But Mr. Chair, this was part of an investment that was done, I hear, in 2017, before the policy came. And due to the restructure of the financial sector, we had this, you know, the our funds locked up. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman. This funds was for um, research, research and development, and um, in, 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 in contravention of the data, the uh, vice chancellor directive, somebody decided to invest it. Well, where is that officer? Mr. Chair, please. Uh, this investment was done. The directive came around 2019, and this was done before the directive. Say, so where is the officer? Um, the officers, I think some have retired or so. Those, yeah. So we don't know the officers. You said you think some have retired. That's how much whether you don't know them. We can find where they are. But, but Mr. Chair, this investment. Do you know the officer? I can't really mention the name. 
um, Mr. Chair, I need to check the records because I wasn't